How's it going? Tobin, back in the den. I've been wanting to do a couple of different series for a while now. And what I've done, I've taken five different subjects, going to break them down to make them easier to digest with a 101, a 201, and in some cases, a 301. In this first video, Fragrances 101, the science behind fragrances, we're going to take a look at what makes fragrances work, how you can hopefully take the information in this video, apply it to the fragrances that you already own and use them to your advantage. And maybe my ultimate hope is, is that you'll be able to make a more informed decision with your next purchase. So it doesn't matter if it's a cheap fragrance like this one here that I got from Marshalls or Ross, one of those, um, you know, discount stores, or if it's something made by a perf uh, perfumer like Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements, the science remains the same. Fragrances can be subjective, but what is not subjective is the science that makes them work, the science behind the fragrance. We're going to take a look at four different categories. The chemistry of it, the chemistry of evaporation, skin's role in diffusion, psychological perception, and sillage and longevity. The preference for light fragrances in summer and heavier, darker fragrances in winter isn't just about fashion or tradition. I once thought that years ago. I've been a fragrance lover. Oh, a frag head is what we call it for probably about 20 years now. Ever since high school, I've really, really enjoyed fragrances. And the last 20 years, I've really grown to not only love them, but just admire them. It's like an art form. It really is the way that people are able to take different notes, bring them together and create something new. We're going to take a look at just individual notes and how they work in the chemistry of evaporation. So just like in the kitchen, when we're cooking food, heat amplifies how fragrances evaporate. In the summer, higher temperatures cause fragrance molecules to disperse more rapidly, intensifying their smell. So you might have a food item and at room temperature, it may or may not have an odor, but as soon as you start heating it up and those molecules you know, start uh, vibrating and shaking and moving faster, the more fragrance that they release, is exactly what goes on with fragrances. That once we apply them to the skin, they're going from that whatever the room temperature was and they quickly start rising to 98.6. And if you're doing something or if you're out in the heat, it's going to get even warmer than that. So for example, light fragrances, citrus, aquatic, or green notes, those are scents that are comprised, scent, those are scent notes that are comprised of smaller, more volatile molecules that perform well in heat. They're refreshing, refreshing and vibrant, and they don't overwhelm the senses in the heat. Now, by contrast, heavy fragrances, um, such as amber, amber resin, uh, oud, spices, they consist of larger, less volatile molecules. In the summer, in the heat, they can become nauseating, cloying. I've even uh, seen words like oppressive um, used to describe how um, these heavier notes can be too much in the sun, in the heat, because they linger too long and are exacerbated by that heat. It's just they become too much as they get warm and they become cloying and even can be nauseous, which is one of the reasons why you have to be careful about wearing dark, heavy winter fragrances in the summer. So that's a kind of a quick glimpse at the science behind the, the evaporation. If we take a look at skin's role in diffusion, skin tends to be warmer and sometimes more hydrated in summer due to heat and sweat. My skin gets super dry in the winter to the point that I'm even like applying, um, moisturizer sometimes to my ears because they, they get dry. My, my thumbs will actually split open. I don't have that problem in the summer. The heat and the sweat, the added hydration in our skin enhances the diffusion of light, crisp fragrances, making them feel vibrant and refreshing. In winter, skin tends to be cooler and drier. There's less precipitation in the air, less 
humidity in the air, not precipitation. Precipitation is rainfall. I know all about that. I live in the Pacific Northwest. So this slows the evaporation process when it's, the skin is drier, when the air is drier around you. Heavier, richer fragrances work well in the winter be, uh, because their molecules are designed to unfold slowly, revealing complex layers over time. And when the skin is wet and you're uh, you know, sweaty, um, perspiring, it all happens much faster because of that moisture and because of the, the diffusion. Kind of like if you look at the, the photo there of how things diffuse, you, you don't want that with a heavy fragrance. And that's one of the things that um, if it diffuses, you get too much of it. And that's when you start running into the risk of it becoming too much and becoming nauseating and people who are close to you not wanting to be near you. And one of the biggest reasons why I wear fragrances is because I want the people that I love, like my wife and daughter, for me to smell pleasant and for them to want to be near me. If we take a look at the third thing that I want to talk about, psychological perception. Fresh, citrusy, and aquatic scents are often associated with energy or coolness aligning with the light airy vibe of summer there's a huge psychological thing that's at play a lot of this is going to have to do with uh you know the culture the society that you live in the uh continent the hemisphere that you live in i often think of my friend lee hazley who lives in thailand they really only have one season two if you look at it as a dry season and a wet season for lee the temperature is you know always in the upper 80s to 90s here, where I live in the Pacific Northwest, we're blessed. We do have four separate seasons, and they're very distinct from one another. Um, so, some of this will, you know, apply to some, and some some of it won't apply to others. So, this is psychological perception. Now, on the flip side, warm, spicy, woody fragrances provide a sense of comfort and warmth, perfect for combating the chill of winter. If you live in a climate that you know doesn't provide that guys like lee like my friend lee he loves menthol and if i lived in a place I, I enjoy menthol don't get me wrong by what i just said there i enjoy menthol but i don't have a need for the cooling sensation of menthol like someone like lee would living in thailand all year round now menthol i reach for it all the time in the summer not all the time but often so the skin's role in diffusion and psychological perception Psychological perception, we have a whole lot of, you know, room to wiggle with, um, but really keep in mind the skin's role in diffusion. The fourth and final thing that I want to just touch base on is sillage and longevity. Sillage is a French word meaning uh, wake. It's not pronounced sillage like it looks like in English. English, it is a French word, C. Siage, 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 see ya later. So just think of a boat going through the water and the way that it leaves that kind of triangular wake behind it. That's what siage is. It is your scent trail that is behind you. And longevity is exactly what it sounds like. How long a fragrance lasts on the skin. So light fragrances have a lower siage, which is great for the summer and almost always a true summer fragrance is going to have a shorter longevity which is good and okay because you can just reapply it if you want it to last longer that's when i recommend the little travel atomizers some little bottle throw it in your pocket th throw it in your uh, glove box as long as it's not going to get too hot in there but you can carry it with you and reapply it during your lunch hour or you know midway through your trip so light fragrances do have a lower sillage and a shorter longevity, which suits summer when people are often in close quarters outdoors. So it is so critical that when you want to, you know, aim to impress. And I, I know all the time, you know, I hear guys say, and I say this too, that, you know, well, I wear fragrances for myself. And I do. I, I wear fragrances for myself. But again, though, going back to just like the clothes. I wear these clothing, this, the clothing for myself ultimately, but I do want to, you know, 
wear my best, to smell my best. I don't want to stink. And the last thing I want to do is apply some expensive perfume only uh, for people to find it uh, obnoxious, right? Heavy fragrances have a stronger sillage and longer lasting power, ideal for winter when layers of clothing and cold air diminish a sense projection. So that's something you know to keep in mind too, is that in winter we can get along, get a, uh, get away with applying more or applying a heavier, darker fragrance because you might be wearing long sleeves or a jacket or even a turtleneck. And then you add in what we talked about a few moments ago with the air being colder and drier, your skin being colder and drier. Yes, your core temperature should still be 98.6, but the exterior of your skin will be cooler and not wet, not perspiring. So if we take the interplay of chemistry, the skin interaction, the psychological impact, we can take these things and take the fragrances that we're already wearing and hopefully take them to the next level. Now this is just a, a 101 to try and give you an idea. In 201, we're gonna dive deeper into the four seasons and the fragrances uh, and notes that can be found there and how to use them to our advantage. This is just an introduction. If it helped, please let me know. Um, my goal is kind of to help new fragrance lovers, new frag heads, new wet shavers. Um, hopefully you found something here that you can use to your advantage. If it's kind of sparked an interest, I invite you to dig deep into the internet. Reach out to these artisans and perfumers. In preparation for this video, I started doing a whole lot of digging through the internet and I reached out to artisans, perfumers that make fragrances. Uh, we have a whole lot of them in the wet shaving community and then there's a whole lot of niche um, perfumers that you can reach out to that will respond to your emails in a short uh, amount of time. I had great success reaching out to perfumers, noses is what they're called in the industry, um, reaching out to noses and they were all very helpful um, helping me prepare this video series. It's a little big things my friends, no matter how you wear your fragrance, as long as it makes you uh, feel better about yourself, it makes you more confident, that's what it's all about is enjoying your fragrance. And so everything I said up above doesn't matter as long as you're enjoying your fragrance. That's the most important thing is, are you enjoying the fragrance? Take care. I'll see you next time.